What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room for the playoffs, the quarterfinals of the Season 7 GBA playoffs. And guys, I've never been to the playoffs before. I'm super stoked for this. So excited. Uh, we are having a rematch against the New Orleans Pelipers uh, for our first match in the uh, in the playoff run that we're going for this week. I'm super excited for those of you new to the channel, just here to uh, catch up on the playoff teams, welcome. Uh, in the locker room, what I normally do is go over the team that I'm gonna be bringing in my match uh, with my opponent. So uh, above me, you will see, and I, I kind of tier the Pokemon above me, which is my opponent's 11 drafted Pokemon, in an order given a, a semblance of likelihood, I think they'll bring them likely to likelihood that I think they'll bring them um, but it's not necessarily look at the top six those are the exact Pokemon I'm predicting and planning for that he's bringing it's a little more complicated than that and I'll get into it uh, in, a, in a second on the left you will see my six Pokemon organized uh, in the way that uh, just in the six Pokemon that I'm bringing uh, I'm not gonna I don't have my entire team listed there but for those of you who aren't familiar with my team uh, my team is Tapu Fini, Salamence, Arcanine, Kinkelder, Amoongus, Gengar, Bronzong, Heliolisk, Umbreon, Rhyperior, and Ditto. Uh, and Salamence is my Z-Mon. So uh, on his side, you'll see his 11 Mon. They are Gudra, Jolteon, Infernape, Skarmory, Melodic, Pillow Swine, Tapu Bulu, Scolipede, Uxi, Sneasel, and Porygon Z. So uh, in the team builder here, we are going to go over... The six mons that I'm bringing this week. So, starting off with Mad Mence. Mad Mence is a similar set to what I brought against him last time. That is a pretty bulky um, Salamence with uh, obviously significant attack investment. He's running Flyinium Z. My four moves are Dragon Claw, Fly, Fire Blast, and Dragon Dance. So, last time we battled, I prepped for the knowledge that he was going to be prepping a certain way. And I was right with that. And in that, he built very balanced and very bulky offense with a couple really quick Pokemon thrown in there uh, for picks. Uh, and the problem with that is, while that prevented any kind of sweeps happening on my end, it also meant that he couldn't really get into a position where he could sweep either. It turned into uh, a pretty slow match. Um, I'm still a little frustrated that people, analysts, and fans alike. Uh, always pointed to me in calling it a stall fest because I won, completely ignoring the fact that John also stalled a hefty amount, refused to switch out Skarmory, yet, yeah, but I'm the bad guy because I won it. That's fine. I understand. Uh, <laughs> I understand why you you put the you put the onus on the person who won the stall war because clearly it was in their benefit. So I will take that, but that's not happening this time for two reasons. One. I did not bring a team that's really even capable of stall, um, unless he significantly uh, underprepared for my team. But two, he is going to be so terrified that this will become a stall match that he's going to go 180 and come at me with a completely different team than he brought last time. Uh, maybe not in the mod that he brought, but his mindset going into this game is going to be very different. And so I have prepped very differently, and that's what's going into my mind right now. I want to share with you guys a quote that my mentality when I go into battles, uh, and in a lot of competitive video games that I play, Overwatch, um, I used to play Hearthstone and League of Legends, I don't really do that anymore, but in, in all these games, there is a mentality you need to bring. Um, to your matches that kind of govern your decision making. It's not just knowledge of the game, it's knowledge of your opponent. And when I prep for these battles, I try and get into my opponent's head. And when I battle, I do it even more so, which is why rematches are so fun because you really get into your opponent's mindset. Uh, John's my friend. I know John pretty well, um, but he is also a very good battler and sometimes his prep is what's hard to predict. Last time, I got it right on the button, and I was able to play safe and lose very few Pokemon as a result of that. Unfortunately, it was risky for me to make moves to try and get into an offensively beneficial position, and so I lost that opportunity uh, in that match. If it had gone on a little bit longer, I could have gotten more opportunities, gotten back into that flow, but uh, the timer ran out, and I ended up winning on timer. This time, he's not going to want that to happen. So my prediction is that he brings more offensively oriented team, keeping the Pokemon that worked very well against me, but then switching out the other ones that did not. 
So, a couple of things he brought last time. He brought a Scarfed Infernape, just in case Salamence got out of hand uh, by Dragon Dancing. It would be able to outspeed uh, plus one speed Salamence and kill me with a uh, Hidden Power Ice. Um, that, was his, that was his prep. The problem with that is it was easy for me to lock the Infernape into a move and then wall it with a Pokemon that Infernape is supposed to be able to beat, which is Umbreon. Uh, Jolteon couldn't beat Umbreon. Gudra couldn't beat Umbreon. Uh, Skarmory ended up being the only safe thing in against it because it could roost off the damage and ended up going nowhere with it. Uh, he didn't bring Melodic. He didn't bring Pillow Swine. He brought Tapu Bulu. Uh, but Tapu Bulu couldn't break it, and it just ended up being a stall war. And he brought Uxie, and Uxie couldn't do anything to it. So, he did not prepare for the Umbreon. He thought, I'll just, you know, I'll hit it. It's In his prep, he literally says, Umbreon's just gonna wish, protect, and do some annoying stuff. That's not enough prep for a Pokemon like Umbreon. This time, I'm telling you, he's gonna prep for it. And what that means is a wall breaker. And... Who is my best friend against wall breakers? It's my friend Remix. So I'm predicting he has some of those this week. Uh, and that's why the Pokemon I think that are likely brings have shifted a little bit in the lower tiers. The top tiers, uh, I think Gudra is coming because it's very good against my team and uh, he really likes it. It's just a staple Pokemon. It's just so solid, uh, but it also can be tricksy. Uh, it can run physical sets. It's got a very decent attack stat. People uh, underestimate that a lot. Uh, it's a great switch into uh, a Pokemon I brought last time, uh, which is Amoongus, which can be potentially very annoying for a team if you don't prep for Spore. Um, and in general, he, he brought a set that could pressure Moana away from defogging last time. Uh, Stealth Rocks are very good against my team. He's probably going to want those up against me again, uh, especially if he's predicting it's going to be a long fight. And it's just a staple Pokemon. I think he's going to bring it. That's why I have it at number one. Jolteon, he's brought it a lot too. There's nothing else on his team that does what Jolteon does. Um, hit and run, and it's his fastest Pokemon. And he's brought it a lot this season. He likes fast electrics. He's brought them in almost every season uh, to almost every match. And so I think he's going to do that again. I think he's going to bring Jolteon. Infernape, again, just like last time, it's not the best Pokemon against me, but it does so much that... You can catch people off guard with it. It's pretty fast, outspeeds a lot of the Pokemon on my team. It's his Z-Captain. I think he's going to bring it, even though I really do think there are better offensive options than Infernape, but I think he's going to bring it anyway. Skarmory is his primary physical wall. It's great against Conkeldur. It's good against Mad Mence. Um, it's a safe switch into Night's Watch, and the reason I think he brings it this week uh, is that I think he's going to bring it with Taunt to shut down Night's Watch. He switches in on it, he taunts it so I can't wish protect or do anything like that, and um, then he can proceed to Whirlwind for hazard damage residual if he wants to do something like that, or uh, thereafter. Melodic, I don't know why he didn't bring it last, uh, last time we battled. It would have done very well. I think he will bring it this week. Um, I think probably Flame or Marvel scale, because I think he... It does well enough against a majority of my special attackers, barring Heliolisk, but he's got answers for Heliolisk in other areas. I think he brings Melodic this week to try and tank my physical attackers. Um, and so Melodic, it, getting rid of Melodic is going to be a big part of my win con. Um, some of my win cons really putting in the work. The reason I Pillow Swine so high this... I know he wants rocks. Am I lagging here? My camera's been really weird. I, I feel like it lagged just now, so I just, that's why there was a stutter there. So, um, I think he brings Pillow Swine this week for a couple of reasons. One, he doesn't, I don't think he's going to run Infernape as his anti ments anymore, uh, because I don't think he can afford to scarf it. I think it needs to be, a, I think it's going to come as a Zemon, or not at all. If he's, if he's smart, he probably won't bring it at all. But, he needs an answer to DD Mence, and so I think he needs an Ice Shard in order to do that, and that's why I think his bring this week is Pillow Swine. Uh, I think he wants the Ice Shard to stop me from getting out of hand. Uh, it's a great stealth rocker, 
It's got good offensive presence. It's got decent bulk. My camera's being really annoying and freezing on me constantly, which is becoming very frustrating. But uh, I just every time it happens, I'll just I'll just reset the video. But uh, I'm pretty sure Pillow Swine is his rocker of choice if it's not Infernape, which I think it would be a mistake to bring Infernape. He needs the coverage options um, and he can't lose U-turn to give up that momentum. So uh, that's another reason why I think he brings Infernape. Uh, a good momentum grabber. Between him and Jolteon, he can uh, switch out a lot and try and chip away and get some momentum that way. Uh, which helps a lot when you have rocks up. So he does, I know he's going to bring a rocker and I think Pillow is more likely than Uxi this week. Tapu Bulu and Scallopede are next as alternative offensive mon to take place of Infernape, uh, basically. I, I don't see Jolteon not coming. It's possible Gudra doesn't come, but I, I don't think that's super likely just because its coverage is so great and it's so bulky. It's going to get hits off in this game, and that's, that's damage. Damage is damage. So I think it's less likely that that one gets dropped, but I do think he brings... Because I know he's going to bring a more offensive team, he could bring Bulu. If he does, I'm predicting Choice Band or Swords Dance this week, which is another reason why I had to make sure I have Remix. Uh, I can't let Bulu get Swords Dances up and just take on the world. Mad Mints and Fresh are decent switch-ins to the Bulu, uh, especially once I know what its set is. Uh, Woodhammer is its primary stab, and one of the only ways it's going to take on Night's Watch is if it's a choice banded or if it gets a swords dance up and it's wood hammer it could be sub swords dance and i really hope it's not i really hope it's not that but it could be um night's watch still a decent switch in we can still break subs uh we're not gonna let this thing get out of hand against us nothing on our team really lets it do that and i'll explain why in just a little bit scallopede it has good stuff for my team um it's a weird pokemon to use but it's a good late game sweeper. It's got decent coverage, decent speed for my team. I think he brings it, honestly. But th if he does, Remix is so imperative against those threats. So that's why I got to keep Remix safe uh, to counter a potential late game sweep by that Mon. Uxi, there for rocks. It's got a great uh, plethora of support moves. Um, heal Bell, it could add to the U-turn, Volt Turn core. Uh, so I think that's why it's there. Sneasel. Again, a potential anti-mence with Ice Shard. Not strong enough to break through Night's Watch. Uh, walled pretty effectively by Moana. Uh, just not uh, not as likely a bring, but definitely there for the ice options. Dark's not particularly good against my team, so I, I don't think he'd bring it for that stab reason. But ice uh, could do well against Mad Mets, so there's a decent chance he brings it for that reason. And then Porygon Z. Uh, <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, it doesn't handle night's watch too well it's risky for it to set up nasty plot if it wants to try and take on night's watch because i have ditto but it could you never know he might a thing he could do is bring set up mons uh just because i might not bring ditto and if i do he doesn't have to click those buttons but if he gets rid of ditto then he can so he might have those anyway so let's go through the team now that i've talked about everything on his side um we have Remix for the reasons I've explained earlier. I don't want him getting out of hand with wall breakers, and I would love to be um, a setup wall breaker with a scarf and uh, counter sweep his team. So Remix is there to remove those risks. Uh, Mad Mets is a very standard um, win con. If he gives me the opportunity to really run away with Mad Mets, uh, if he sacks the melodic, if it's a physically defensive melodic, uh, if he doesn't respect the fire blast i'm gonna be playing in a way to bluff that i don't have the fire blast so the first time i see skarmory i'm actually gonna hard switch um if i'm in with mad ments a, a scenario i envision happening is his primary switch into klisk x who is coming this week thunderbolt volt switch hyper voice glare with the silk scarf i think his primary switch into this is going to be um the gudra because it just it really won't take much from it. It's a good way for him to gauge the type of set I am. Uh, a Volt Switch doesn't do much to him, but it does put him in death range to a Dragon Claw. So Volt Switch with Heliolisk into Mad Mets is going to be huge for me if I can get him to switch. Thing is, he could switch in on Jolteon, but that is amazing information. If the Jolteon is Volt Absorb, Ditto walls it entirely unless it's Hidden Power Ground. If it is Hidden Power Ground, Mad Mets is a safe switch in because... Um, 
the Thunderbolt is neutral. It won't get off, like won't do too much. Not a safe switch in necessarily, um, but it doesn't have HP ice. I know that that's great news and it can potentially afford me a dragon dance. Um, so that's my idea behind Klisk X. He also has the Pillow Swine. Pillow Swine, when I see it, I, I need to get Moana in there um, because I don't want rocks up against my team. If he wants to click Earthquake right away, he has that option available to him. Um, but I will outspeed him. My Moana is running a kind of mixed set. 156 modest, uh, 172 HP, 180 speed. The speed outspeeds a um, adamant max speed Bulu. Tapu Bulu. So I can get something off on it. Uh, it cannot set up a sub against Moana uh, on a... For so, if I was sacking Moana, it sets up a sub. It's not going to get an attack off before I get an attack off unless it's Jolly. That's great news, um, knowing that it's Jolly. Uh, Kebby, I hate how often I'm having to hit restart uh, on my recording, but I think it's going to have to keep happening. So the yeah, so the Moana uh, can take on an Infernape hit better that way. I'm also running Protect to scout through it, um, to scout out the the Acid Downpour or Gunk Shot if I switch in on it, um, and the Sludge Wave from Gudra. At, all around, I think it, it just nets me an, an extra turn, which I think is it could potentially be really useful against those guys. Defog, I need it. Uh, I need to be faster uh, than, than the Tapu Bulu. This will allow me to likely outspeed the Skarmory also. It doesn't do a whole lot for me, but it could be useful. Um, and less likely to get outsped by the Gudra, who did outspeed me last time. If the Gudra does outspeed me, that is a massive speed investment. I know he's uh, probably going to be very offensive, if that's the case, if he does still outspeed Moana. Uh, the offensive investment allows Moonblast to be a 3-hit KO against an Assault Vest variant of the Gudra. And uh, that's why Moana's coming. I really want that defog. I got two Mons weak to it, and I, I need to keep that chip damage off my side of the field. So Moana is going to switch in against Uxie and Pillow Swine every time, <laughs> every time. Uh, so it'd be very useful to get Intimidates off on that Pillow Swine so that I can take those Earthquakes a little bit better. But if he does opt to go for an Earthquake, that's not rocks. And uh, that's that's A-OK -okay with me if he's going to keep doing that. Um, but I still think that Gudras is most likely switch in to the Heliolisk. Let's go over Night's Watch. Uh, very standard. Um... Did I end up going with this defensive set? I think I did end up going with this defensive set. I switched Night's Watch around a lot, uh, juggling between it being specially defensive, more specially defensive, and more physically defensive. I, I went in a somewhere in between with a 156 bold nature. I need him to be able to sponge um, hits from things that aren't wall breakers. If they are wall breakers, that's good knowledge to have, and I usually have answers for a lot of those. Uh, Banded Ape. Uh, once I know its move, Mence is an amazing switch into it. Um, if it's uh, set up Tapu Bulu, I'm actually a really good switch into Tapu Bulu also. Uh, Stone Edge obviously will hit me for quite a lot. However, uh, after an Intimidate, uh, it really does weaken it quite a bit. And um, I can play play off it from there. I do have the Supersonic Sky Strike. I do have Fly. Uh, I could potentially set up a Dragon Dance if I really think it's going that route, uh, so we can kind of see. Fresh is also a very good switch into it. Again, the coverage move that he has for us is Stone Edge, and uh, but luckily Fresh does still have Morning Sun. The Fresh set is Muscle Band, Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Extreme Speed, Morning Sun. Uh, the Muscle Band is, I want... I don't want to lose the extra damage from Wild Charge on a Melodic. It two-hit KOs uh, a physically defensive Melodic. Uh, and I want extra damage on the extreme speed too, so I don't want to go Expert Belt. I don't want to go Life Orb because I can't afford the chip damage on Fresh, since he may have to uh, be sponging some hits from some of his threats. Uh, and I, so I wanted to be able to switch moves, especially into Morning Sun if necessary. The speed tier is uh, 133 is to outspeed. Yeah, uh, and so that's that's the whole team. I think I went through it in a really weird order, but that's the that's the team we're going for this week, guys. Very excited. Uh, for the battle and John's been messaging me and I am noticing whenever I get pop-ups on the bottom of the screen is kind of when I lag So uh, I'm gonna get into it with John right now and uh, I'm very excited. I'm very nervous Let's nerve sight our way to victory as always. My name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time